Making GNOME tolerable in Fedora 28. That's our topic for today, so let's get started. So today I want to take a look at the recently released beta of Fedora 28 again. I made a, a quick uh, video about Fedora 28's beta uh, just a couple of days ago. And I'm not a real fan of the GNOME desktop environment. In particular, I'm not a fan of the vanilla GNOME that Fedora tends to ship with. So what I thought about doing today was I'm going to take Fedora 28 and I'm going to try to make the GNOME desktop environment great again. I'm going to install some extensions, uh, play around with the GNOME tweak tool, and see if I can turn this into a proper desktop environment. Okay, so this is this is the Fedora 28 beta. Uh, again, I, I haven't done any tweaking of the system. The other day when I reviewed it, I reviewed Fedora 28 beta as it comes standard. I haven't done any tweaking of the system at all. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to install some extensions. Uh, the first thing I want to do, though, before I get started is the GNOME tweak tool. It's not installed by default. I would like to install it, though. So. It opens the GNOME Software Center when I do a search for the GNOME Tweak Tool. So I'm just going to click Install. And this should take care of that. Okay. Let's launch it. Make sure it's functioning correctly. Yep. Okay, so we have the GNOME Tweak Tool. Alright. And uh, just so I uh, don't have to keep coming back to this later, I'm going to right click on that icon choose add to favorites so now I have the GNOME tweak tool right here in the dash okay so the first thing we need to do is go out and find some extensions so I'm gonna open up Firefox and I'm gonna go to the uh, GNOME extension website I'm not exactly sure of the web address it's gonna search for it okay so it's extensions.gnome.org let me click on that, and I'm going to search for some extensions. Um, first extension I want to search for is the GNO-menu, the GNO menu, GNOME menu. And here it is. Now, the version of GNOME Shell that is running in Fedora 28 beta is GNOME's, uh, GNOME 3.28. There is not a 3.28 version of GNOME menu, but 3.26 should work. So I'm just going to go ahead and download that. I'm going to choose Save File. It's going to save this to my Downloads folder. I'll come back to that later. I'm going to do uh, I'm going to search for some other extensions I want. I know I want the Frippery Move Clock extension right here because I don't like this clock in the center of the panel. I want to move that to the right, you know, where it makes a little bit more sense. Again, there's no 3.28 version available, but 3.26 is available, and it should function correctly. 3.28, this version of GNOME is very new, so there's not very many extensions offering a 3.28 version just yet, but so far in my uh, experimenting, a lot of the 3.26 extensions work just fine. Okay, so we've got GNOME menu, Frippery move clock, uh, another one I like this is the open weather extension. You, you like having some desktop weather? I know I like, you know, three, four, five day forecasts sometimes. I like to know what's, what's going on throughout the week as far as the weather forecast. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. So that's downloaded. Um, another thing I never really liked about the GNOME shell is this transparent bar at the top. Uh, you know, I like solid colors, so there is an extension called, I think it's Dynamic Panel Transparent, yep, Dynamic Panel Transparency. This allows us to adjust the opacity of the top panel or turn it off completely. So. We choose our shell version. Again, there's no 3.28, but 3.26 should work. That's going to 
download that for us. And the only other extension I want to install is the dash to doc extension. Now, when I do a search for dash to doc, well, if I type it correctly, dash to doc, and I click on it, and I go to shell version, 3.26 is available. Uh, I could download that one, but I do know for a fact that there is a 3.28 version available of dash to doc you just have to uh, go manually get it and let's see where that is here uh, new release available introducing support for gnome shell 3.28 and let's see there's a download somewhere uh, as usual the extension can be obtained from the extension website which is where we just were but there's no 3.28 there or downloaded manually from the release page so let me click on the release page and yep version 63 for gnome shell.3.28 so let me download that and that will be the latest dash to doc for gnome shell 3.28 all right so we have all our extensions now Okay, so I've got all those extensions downloaded, so let me open up our file, file manager here. Of course, it downloaded all those extensions to our downloads folder. Let me change the view of this folder. Okay. Anyway, these are all zip files. Let me extract them. I'm just going to extract them one at a time here. Extract the move clock. Extract, extract open weather. Extract dynamic panel and extract dash two docs. I've got all five of those extensions I downloaded extracted. So I'm going to cut and then I'm going to go to the home folder. Now it's not showing any uh, hidden files and directories here. So let's see. Preferences. Is there a preference? Is there an option to show hidden files and directories. It's been a while since I've used the Nautilus file manager, but I'm assuming I can still view hidden files and folders on the system if I want. Uh, maybe it's in this menu. Yep, right here. Show hidden files. Okay. All right. And we need to go to a hidden folder here called .local. In that folder, we need to go to share. In this folder, we need to go to GNOME Shell. And in this folder, we need to go to a folder called Extensions. There isn't one here. I'm going to create it. Extensions. And in this Extensions folder, I paste all those extensions I downloaded. Now, I need to get rid of uh, part of the name here. The version number, v63.shell extension. I need to get rid of that. So the dash to doc is dash to doc at micxgx.gmail.com. And all the version numbering behind that domain name, gmail.com, is no longer there. I need to do that to each one of these. So this one just needs to end in github.io. It doesn't need the version and the shell extension behind it. So get rid of v3.shell extension here. And this one, I need to go to properties. I can click on it, get rid of v15.shell extension. And the same with this one. Get rid of all of that. All right, that is it. Now, we need to restart the GNOME shell in order to install these extensions. So we need to Alt F2, enter a command. You need to hit the letter R on your keyboard, R, hit enter, and you see restarting. It's restarting the GNOME shell. And that should have done it for us. Now we need to open the tweak tool. And now under extensions, we should have all those extensions that we were wanting to install. For example, dash to dock. Let me go ahead and enable that. Oh, that's so much better having that that dock permanently fixed. Uh, I don't like how big it is, so I'm going to click the little cog next to it, the settings for it, and I'm going to adjust the icon size down quite a bit, about to 32 pixels. 
that's not bad. I'll leave it on the left hand side of the screen, but I could adjust it to the bottom top right if I wanted to. But I'm going to put it back on the left. Launchers, we could add some launchers to it. Behavior, I'm fine with the default behavior for now. Uh, shrink the dash, save space, reducing padding and border radius. Yeah, you know, there is too much padding around these icons. If I click that on, shrink the dash, yeah. That is already so much better than it is before. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. I think I can live with that. All right. Already, we're starting to make GNOME great again. All right. Dynamic panel transparency. I don't like having this very transparent panel. It's kind of off-putting to me. You know, I, I really don't like that kind of thing. So I'm going to turn that off. Oh, oh, excuse me. Turn it on which is strange, Dy dynamic panel transparency. You're turning it on, even though I want to turn the transparency off, but I go to the settings, <clears throat> go to background, enable custom opacity. So maximized opacity is already set to 100%, but unmaximized is set to 0%, which is see-through. Change that to 100%, and now Let's see. Let me open up something that I can maximize to test this out. So maximized is solid. Unmaximized is also solid. So it's working as expected. I don't like the black background because this is more gray. So I want to change the color. So I'm going to enable custom panel color. Enable that panel color. And that one there looks like the theme color, that dark gray. Enable that, and we'll close this. Hmm, it's not wanting to let me close. Again, this is Fedora 28. It's a, a beta, so there is some bugginess. There is some lag and crashing and you know all of that. And it does look like it's kind of froze up on me. I may have to restart this VM. Yeah, let me restart the VM, but we got two of our extensions enabled. I'm going to restart the VM, then we'll go ahead and enable the rest. Okay, so I had to reboot the VM. Uh, that was a pretty hard lockup. I really couldn't do anything except restart the VM. But anyway, we had got some of our extensions installed. We installed dash to dock, dynamic panel transparency. So we got dash to dock and we got the dynamic panel transparency which I use to actually eliminate panel transparency this clock in the center of the panel I don't like that it makes no sense to me why you would put that in the center of a panel I'm gonna do frippery move clock enable that and it moves it to the right of the panel that makes a lot more sense uh, there is no settings cog or anything here you really can't edit this in any way but I don't think you really need to. Uh, at least I don't. I don't need to. I'm fine with how it is de by default. All right, GNOME menu. Uh, I really don't like this menu here. The default GNOME shell menu. This makes no sense to me either. This full screen menu with these gigantic icons. Uh, I would never use this. It's not categorized in any way. Uh, you know, I might would use it if I was just hitting the super key and just start, you know, typing something and hit enter, you know, like I just launched the terminal there. So I could use it as far as, you know, launching stuff via the keyboard. Oh, wow. I actually had a man, GNOME shell is struggling today. That looked like that was a crash, too. It says, oops, it looks like GNOME shell crash. The problem has been automatically reported. Well, at least... Uh, you know, I didn't have to reboot the VM, but there's definitely some bugginess here. But anyway, that default menu system is garbage. So GNOME menu, I'm going to enable this. And now we have this menu system. We have view, we have apps, which of course gives us that apps menu, the default one. And then we have menu here. Now that that is much much nicer than that uh those gigantic icons that are taking up all of the screen this is a proper menu i i can handle this it's categorized you have all these subcategories here it looks like you have some quick launchers here uh you have your session stuff here 
uh, yeah, I really, really digging this. Uh, but because I have this menu, I don't really need this menu. Or at least I don't need that there. So let's see if I can click the settings cog here. And that apps button, can I turn that off? Remove apps button from the panel. Yep, and that's gone. I really don't need the view either. Can I turn that off? Remove view button from the panel. Okay. And I think I'm I'm good with that. Yeah, I really like that. It's a much better menu. All right. Um, what else did we download from GNOME extensions? Open weather. Let me turn open weather on. And now we have weather. Of course, this weather is in the center of the panel. Uh, I don't like that. So we click the settings here for open weather. And let's see, layout, position in the panel, center is chosen by default. Let's change that to right. Oh yeah, much better. And I'll leave everything else as default. So already we have improved the standard GNOME shell um, immensely with dash to dot, dynamic panel transparency, frippery move clock, GNOME menu, and open weather. So already it, it looks really, really nice. Uh, I'm going to add some stuff to this dash to dot because I keep uh, like launching the terminal. So why don't I add the terminal to the dash to dot? Uh, what else have I been launching a lot of? Tweaks, which I already added. Um, you know, I could add some other stuff. If I was actually planning on running this all the time, you know, I use the text editor all the time. Uh, LibreOffice. I do use Writer and Impress quite a bit. So I could add those. If, again, if this was, I was planning on running this as my daily driver, which I might actually install Fedora on physical hardware, maybe even on my main machine at some point. Uh, I'm not totally against the idea. I think Fedora is a very interesting distro. And it's one I've never lived in. Uh, I've installed it a few times, but I've never put it on like a main production machine and actually lived in it. Now that we get the GNOME extensions set up, uh, themes. Let me open the GNOME tweak tool again. I'm pretty sure we don't really have any theme options. Yeah, we have the Edway to theme, the default GNOME theme. And then, of course, high contrast for those that need high contrast for visually impaired people. Or uh, Let's get some themes. Let me open up a terminal. And sudo dnf install. Uh, you know what? I really like the adapter theme. Wonder is it in the repos? It's uh, adapter GTK theme. Adapter dash GTK dash theme. I believe. Could be wrong about that. But I think DNF will uh, suggest the right package if I'm slightly off on that. It was adapter dash GTK dash theme. All right, do we want to install it? Yes or no? Yes, of course. This may take a second. And we wait. After this is done, we'll reopen the GNOME tweak tool. And now under appearance for themes, instead of add wait to, now we have adapter, adapter ETA, adapter Nocto, etc. So if I wanted to, how about the Adapted Nocto? That's the dark Adapter theme. Let's open up the File Manager. Now that's really nice. You know, I kind of like that. I don't like the Add Weight to Icon Set. That is a really, really ugly icon set. How about sudo dnf install? Um, what's the breeze? Icon set. Is it a breeze icon theme? Breeze icon theme, yep. I really like the breeze icon set. It's the default icon set in Plasma. I'm not big on Plasma, but I really do like the breeze icon set. 
Um, when it comes to a default icon set, the KDE, KDE guys get it right. The GNOME guys uh, complete fail. Uh, we need to restart the tweak tool. Icons. How about Breeze Dark for the icons? Yeah, and I'm already liking where we're going with this. Uh, I don't like the wallpaper though. You guys know I, I love wallpapers. Uh, I'm kind of big on wallpapers. Because really, I mean, if you want to improve the look of your desktop, I mean, most of your desktop is the wallpaper. So the wallpaper is probably the biggest improvement you can make. So DNF, pseudo DNF, install F28 dash backgrounds dash GNOME. So Fedora 28 backgrounds GNOME. And th those are already installed. Well, uh, how about Fedora 27 dash backgrounds GNOME? And that'll, you know what? That particular package, I, the reason it was already installed, the standard F28 backgrounds GNOME is basically just the, the two wallpapers that come with Fedora 28. This one here and then one other that's kind of ugly. We want the extra wallpaper pack. So F28 backgrounds extras dash GNOME. This is the wallpaper pack we want. This will give us uh, quite a bit of extra wallpapers here to choose from. The default, this dark blue one, is not bad. But we, we need options, right? Especially if we're going to start playing around with the theming. Uh, for example, this dark wallpaper would be great if I was using a light GTK theme. But you know what? I was going to go with the dark uh, adapter theme. and the uh, you know, Or if I was going to do add weight, I'd probably do add weight to dark. You don't want a dark wallpaper and a dark theme. You know, you want dark wallpaper and a light theme. Or a light wallpaper and a dark theme. So, it's good to have some options on wallpaper. This is going to take a second to download, though. Okay, so we've finished installing that wallpaper pack. I'm going to go back to the tweak tool. Alright, and appearance. Let's see, background, image. Click that and in user share backgrounds F28 extras. That was the name of the wallpaper pack, right? Extras. And now we have some extra wallpapers in here. And there are some really, really nice wallpapers in here. Really beautiful wallpapers. Um, I'm just going to click a few of them so you guys can see. A lot of good nature photographs. Uh, you know, that's that's really cool there. Oh, let's go to Zen. The last one in the pack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's really, really classy. Kind of minimal. You know, it's not splashy. It's not a ton of colors. It's my kind of wallpaper. Goes great with a dark theme, too, because it's a lighter color. Really contrasts our dark theme. So... I'm cool with that. I really let me open up the file manager. Yeah, everything about that looks pretty nice. Uh, you know what? Even though I really love the breeze icon set, the blue. As much as I hate the Adwaita icon set, I think that brown Adwaita icon set might actually be a better way to go with this. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. Uh, I mean, this is so much better than what we were presented with as a default theme and a default GNOME shell here in Fedora 28. So uh, I could live in that. I could get some work done in this. One thing we want to do before we leave, I mentioned we were going to play around and make GNOME more tolerable in Fedora 28. Uh, there is one other thing I want to do that is not GNOME related but it will make Fedora more tolerable, is we need to in, uh, enable the RPM Fusion repo. So I'm just going to search enable RPM Fusion. And rpmfusion.org, their configuration here uh, basically tells you 
how to enable it. Fedora 22 and later, of course, we're on Fedora 28, so this works for us. This line here, let's copy that. Let's open a terminal. Let's paste that in the terminal. Let's hit enter. Have to give it our sudo password. And now we are enabling some non free repos. RPM Fusion gives us access to non free repos, repos that contain non free software, you know, those programs that are not free and open source programs. For example, one of the programs I install on every machine is Discord. Discord, Discord unfortunately, is not open source. So sudo dnf install discord should work if it's in the repos if it's in the rpm fusion repos I'm syncing the repos right now yep and discord is there do i want to install uh, i'm actually not going to use discord in this vm so i'm going to decline that that was just a example so that's it. Uh, that's making GNOME tolerable in Fedora 28. Uh, now, would I ever live in GNOME? Probably not. And GNOME is not my kind of uh, desktop environment. I don't like the workflow. Uh, I may, though, give it a go just for purposes of this channel. I mentioned that I probably will install Fedora 28 on one of my machines. Uh, I want to install it on physical hardware when it comes out. You know, first week of May is when Fedora 28 is due out. And if I install Fedora 28, I'm going to install the GNOME edition because that's their flagship edition, the GNOME Fedora 28 edition. So I may put this on physical hardware. And if I do, I may live in it, you know, a couple of weeks, maybe a month. Probably won't go that far with it because I don't expect to, you know, enjoy using GNOME. Plus, it's kind of resource heavy, takes a lot of CPU and a lot of memory. That's not me. You guys know I'm not a big fan of bloat. I prefer minimal. I prefer lightweight. Um, as always, to end this video, the one thing I would like to do very quickly, I would like to give a special thanks to all my patrons. All you guys that are my Patreon supporters, Ron, Brian, Carl, Greg, Carlos, Rob, Mark, Christian, Benjamin, Stephen, Marcus, Kevin, Bob, and Dark One. You guys rock. You guys help make this show possible. Peace, guys.